What if a lot of what you believe about your type 2 diabetes is actually false? A lot of people who get diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is kind of done in a bit of a rush and though we have diabetes educators, it's so overwhelming that a lot of the information that you get about your diabetes kind of goes above your head or you know in through one and out through the other because you're just so stressed, right? And so you start this journey of type 2 diabetes with things uh, or beliefs that are actually false. And so in today's video, I'm gonna um, outline some false beliefs or false expectations related to type 2 diabetes, specifically seven false expectations of type 2 diabetes. Before we get into it, for those of you meeting me for the first time, I'm Dr. Amna Goodin, a physician and a health coach, and I help people with high blood sugar levels get those blood sugar levels to normal without having to take more medications. All right, type 2 diabetes, really such a common disease. Many of you are watching my videos and are learning and finding them helpful because you're learning things and becoming empowered in ways that you have not been before. So let's get on with this one. First false expectation is particularly after being diagnosed, just diagnosed, expecting blood sugar levels to come to normal like immediately. Like, okay, I'm starting my medicine today. My sugar should be normal tomorrow. No, it doesn't work like that. Don't get despondent. Don't be, get down in yourself because your blood sugar level is still high even though you're not eating any sugar whatsoever. A lot of people in the beginning, they're really strict with the diet, no sugar whatsoever, but the sugar is still high the next day. The problem is insulin resistance, that is the root cause of your diabetes and insulin levels are high because your body's not responding to it. So you have to give yourself time for the insulin res resistance to improve, right? And for the body to start responding to insulin better. And as your body wakes up and starts responding to this insulin, then your blood sugar levels get better and better and better. That can take three weeks, maybe longer, depending on how insulin resistant you were, but just know that your levels are not going to be instantly normal the moment you start taking your medications. And so give yourself a little break and just trust the process Keep up with your diet, keep up with your medicines, and eventually you will see the improvements, okay? Um, second false expectation is essentially, um, this is related to meals, and essentially looking around and trying to figure out what to eat and seeing that, you know, sugar-free on the, is on the, the label says sugar-free, so that means it's good. Sugar-free on the label means it's good. That is definitely false because many, many, many foods marketed to diabetics, they might not have sugar per se, as we say sucrose, right? But they have other things. They might have artificial sweetness, but they might also have low calorie sweetness that may be low calorie for one person, but not another one. A common one is sugar alcohols, erythritol, maltitol, xylitol. These are sugar alcohols that Yes, some people might not break them down and absorb as much as others, but there are many people who will have really high, significantly high blood sugar levels with a sugar alcohol, and sugar alcohol will contribute to persisting uncontrolled diabetes, right? So because the label says sugar-free, does not mean it's good for a diabetic. Some of them really even say diabetes or diabetic friendly. No, no, no. In fact, if a label has to go out of its way to put sugar free or to put diabetes friendly, you might want to consider leaving it because it means that this food is processed and in the process of taking out sugar, they put something else in and that thing that was put in may be just as bad for your sugar, if not worse, all right? Third false expectation is that the lack of symptoms means that your diabetes is not bad. Symptoms arise when the bottom is about to fall out, right? So our bodies are very good at keeping everything together at all costs, right, to try and maintain that stability. And for where diabetes is concerned, what the body is doing is really trying to pack away, store away glucose elsewhere in the body just to get it out of the bloodstream. Now think about it, like you're blowing up a balloon and it's being packed with more and more and more air and the balloon on the surface is going to look fine. It's going to be nice and smooth. You're not going to see any cracks or anything or discoloration. But when the balloon is too full, it's going to pop and then, you know, it's over, right? So it's just like that in the body. The body's going to keep everything together, store away that sugar, and everything's going to look all nice on the surface. You're not going to have any symptoms because the body's really doing its job. But when it's too packed, the system is too stressed, then the bottom falls out and you develop maybe really sky high levels or diabetes coma or something of the sort, okay? So lack of symptoms does not mean that your diabetes is not bad. Fourth, fourth false expectation 
is that you have to give up your favorite foods. You do not have to give up your favorite foods. You just have to know how to eat. Sugar, yes, that's one thing that, you know, really and truly all of us, not just diabetics, but all of us should aim to have not much added sugar, certainly no more than six teaspoons or 24 grams of the 24 hour period, right? So sugar, yes, I'm gonna say we all could stand to decrease our sugar intake and so you would have to give that up. But in terms of other foods, um, sometimes, uh, you know, pizza, ice cream, you need to focus in the beginning on getting your insulin resistance reversed, having your body be more responsive to insulin so that then in the future, you can have little treats of maybe something that might be a little starch or a, little, a small dessert. You want to have things like dessert after a full meal that has protein and fat and fiber as opposed to having sweets on an empty stomach. A lot of diabetics actually are shocked. Sometimes they are strict for like three months or six months or whatever, and then they maybe have a stressful period and they sort of cheat and you know have i don't know a big burger or something and they actually stunned that it did not do to their blood sugar what it used to do before they got on the medicines and got on the diet so before the sugar would be 300 and then after six months of doing good they had this burger or whatever and their sugar was like i don't know 160 170 they're like oh my goodness like what happened how come this did not cause the problems that it used to cause before and it's simply because they were able to reduce or reverse their insulin resistance in that six month period when they were doing well and because the insulin resistance is reversed they were able to handle that burger without any problems now what happens with a lot of people is that they see that oh this doesn't cause problems and so they kind of overdo it a little bit and then end up having more and more of these uh, cheating episodes and so eventually go, they go into the same problem that they had before of insulin resistance and sugar staying high, right? So you don't have to give up your favorite foods forever, but focus on getting your body to start functioning properly, to start responding to insulin. And then after that, if you're, I guess, disciplined enough to just have one of these little cheat meals or whatever, once a week or whatever, and then you can enjoy this um, and desserts, enjoy them, but after a full meal with fat, protein, and fiber, etc. okay? Um, fifth, uh, false expectation is that exercise is dangerous. This is a common one I see. People are like, oh my God, no, you can't exercise. If your sugar is high and you exercise, you know, you can pass out. That's a bad thing. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna go and run a marathon, but physical activity is absolutely important for diabetes. And in fact, physical activity is one of the things that will help you to burn more sugar. In keeping your blood sugar levels down, I mean, there's several things you could do. I have my beam uh, blueprint, burn more sugar, eat less sugar, absorb less sugar, and make less sugar. And burning less more sugar is really one of the ways to keep your blood sugar levels down. If your blood sugar levels are high and you take a little walk, it means that you're using your muscles, you're moving around, around your heart is being muscles are being used a little more you and so on and so you're able to burn more sugar and get sugar levels down like i said you're not going to go running a marathon or like i don't know running on the treadmill vigorously for an hour yes excessive things like that would be stressful and that can contribute to worsening blood sugar levels but in terms of being afraid that you're going to plummet them get them really low you know a simple walk maybe even a brisk walk or maybe up a hill a little bit should not cause any major problems exercise is not dangerous but it's actually beneficial do everything sensibly and in moderation right if you have heart problems obviously you know talk to your doctor and so on about those things but yeah um, sixth false expectation is that natural sugars are fine for diabetes. Natural sugars are better rather. So honey, maple syrup, date or date sugar. Some people think, well, it's natural, so it's fine, right? It's not like those sugar cane crystals. No, sugar is sugar and all these sugars are pretty much going to do the same thing to your blood glucose levels. You carry them up and that is what you're trying to avoid. You want to Try to keep all sugars, whether it be honey, maple syrup, um, 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 date sugar, no more than six teaspoons for 24 hour period, no more than 24 grams for, for 24 hour period, right? Limit all sugars. Um, and then seven, one, this one false expectation is that, oh my carbs are over for me, I can't eat any carbs or several. Well, did you know that fiber is a carb? Fiber is a carbohydrate, it's just that it's an indigestible, it's one that we cannot break down. We can't break it down, but that does not mean that we don't benefit from it. We have so many benefits from fiber. One is that it slows down the breakdown of the other absorbable um, carbohydrates, right? Starch, sugar. So the presence of fiber, yes, it's a carb, but it's helping to 
the body to process other carbs in a more moderate um gradual fashion and not to mention too that fiber even though we are not absorbing it into our bodies it actually feeds the good bacteria in our intestines right so yes you can absolutely eat carbs but you want to avoid processed carbs those carbs that are processed to the point where all or most of the fiber is reduced and then they're also you know so refined that they're gonna get easily absorbed into the bloodstream and um cause your blood sugars to go up really high and let me give you a bonus this bonus a false expectation is that the only thing you need to avoid is sugar and you can have whatever else and it's kind of related to the issue of carbs for many people they are looking at sugar-free everything diabetes friendly sugar-free etc but what they're missing is that you can actually get sugar from starch so starch is sugar in a more complex form starch is a sugar of glucose molecules sugar, sorry a string of glucose molecules and so when you eat starch all the links between the individual glucose or sugar bits get broken and you have free sugar going into your bloodstream so for somebody who's thinking well i'm sugar free why on earth am i having these diabetes problems it's because of the starch which is sugar in another form going into your body and doing the very same thing as sugar all right so these are some false expectations that kind of explain why they're false and hopefully you can sort of go back listen to these this video again and sort of see which of these expectations which of these false beliefs you have had in your mind and then how you can reverse everything and sort of improve things for your blood sugar okay quickly in terms of the false expectations again one expecting immediate resolution of your high blood sugar symptoms or signs two um that sugar free on a label means that it's good three oh i have no symptoms that means my diabetes is not bad four uh, I have to give up my favorite foods forever. Five, exercise is dangerous because it can drop my blood sugar too low. Six, natural sugars are better than cane sugar crystals. And seven, I can't eat any carbs ever again. And then the bonus, I only need to avoid sugar. So these are some false expectations, false beliefs related to, to diabetes. Hopefully I have clarified certain things for you and thank you for watching. Share this with another um, person who you think might benefit greatly from the information. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.